Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this and today's review video is going to be all about cameras. Bike cameras, action cameras, call them what you like, there's a lot of them out there. All the ones that I'm reviewing today I've bought and owned. The youngest one is six months old, although the actual camera itself is about uh, 12 years old. I got it second hand and the newest one that I'll be reviewing today is three years old and uh, they're from three different manufacturers, five different types of cameras. We'll be doing a lot of looking at the battery life, the recording, uh, the quality of the images, and uh, of course, my opinions and which ones I would use and why. So, let's get on with it. So, the films are here, the sound is recorded as well as the video, so you can get an idea of what they sound like. All of the films are under 30 miles an hour in built up areas. And for some reason the Hero Ape recording has lost the audio. Don't know why this is, it seems to happen with this particular camera when I put it in the video editing software. Next up we're looking at the recording duration and as you'll see the Garmin Verb wins out here. Next up accessories. The X3 uses the same mounting points as the GoPros do, so you can use a lot of accessories. You get your tripods, you get your sticky fixings, you get your suction fixings, you get your wrist pods, you get your headbands, you get your long extension poles. There's lots and lots of accessories you can get for these cameras. Some good, some bad, some made in China, some not. Chest mounts, floaty mounts for if you take these things swimming or scuba diving. They even surf for bounce. So there's a lot of them you can get. And also you get the camera housings themselves and even Kaiser Bass went into the accessory market with extension poles and a strange banana clip, which I have actually used on several occasions. When you come to the Garmin, you get basically a sticky fixing and a uh, clamp fixing and a helmet fixing. I've taken the straps off this one. And that's pretty much it. The cameras didn't sell at all well, so they were discontinued along with the accessories. And you'll do well to find any these days. When it comes to recharging the cameras, I gave them a fair test as possible. I used a gang plug with a couple of USB ports on it and recharged two cameras at a time using the leads that they came with for recharging and data download. The data downloading was also done on the leads they came with, although you can also get separate recharging units for the batteries and that's how I recharge my Hero 8 in most circumstances. I've got three batteries for it, the recharge unit takes two batteries at a time and does seem to be quicker than recharging through the camera. Three of the cameras under review have a screen on them for helping with the alignment. You might wonder why I'm using a torch here to show that the Garmin one is uh, looking at asking me to touch a button to wake up the screen. The reason being is that the Garmin doesn't have a backlight. Here you can see that it's showing a, an A3 sheet of paper in front of it. The other two, you can clearly see the sheet of paper, the Garmin, no backlight, no good, really not good. And uh, I've put a table together here showing the cameras in the first column, file sizes, file lengths. And you'll notice that the Hero 8 Black does have quite a large file size for under 12 minutes of recording time. There's obviously more data going into the files than I can actually see when I'm editing, maybe some metadata or something behind. Fifth column is recording time in gigabytes per minute, so you can work out what sort of cards you're going to need to put into these. And the transfer rate is just there to give you an idea of how long it's going to take to transfer 
all of your riding onto your computer so you can share it or edit it. Looking at the housing for the Kaiser Bass X3, it is actually possible to not fully close it and get it slightly wonky as you can see here. I've done this a couple of times, the third time I did it I actually caught it. It does secure the camera but if you leave it for long enough it's probably going to cause some damage to the plastic and metal clips on it, although I've not seen that. The camera itself is a pretty good, fairly standard action camera type thing and you can see here that we've got the ports for the charging and data download and the memory card. The battery is hidden under a separate closure to the bottom of it and you'll see that the funny white thing here, it's actually a little bit of paper. After a while there's a chance that these ones will cut out when you're riding. Um, it might be due to a loose battery, so what I suggest is turn the camera on, start filming, give it a good bang on your left hand, give it a good bang on your right hand and whichever one causes the battery to drop out, put a little bit of paper in to take up the slack. I'm not really sure why they're getting slack but they do and uh, easy fix, mildly annoying and uh, everything goes back together well. The Garmin Verb doesn't have a housing, it has a cradle because the camera itself is waterproof. Quite simple, clip it in at the back, clip it in at the front and uh, jobs are good. Downside, you can't buy these cradles anymore. They've uh, been discontinued as has the camera for some time now. There is a nice little indexing system on the cradle itself. You can hear the clicking here in both the rotation and the uh, tilting of the camera itself. What this means is that when you uh, do nip up the uh, screws, you don't need to have to tighten them really far to uh, get it to lock solid. In the back of the camera, we have the charging port and the data port. Uh, it seems to be a, a bit of a strange thing that there was an odd sized data port used for all these cameras, but the charging one will also transfer the data. When it comes to getting into the battery and the memory card on these, you take off a quarter turn rear clip, you give a couple of firm taps, that drops the battery out, then you can get into the memory card, which is secured using an old style mobile phone metal clip. It's annoying, only mildly so, because uh, I don't tend to change the cards in this one very often. Hero three both black and silver editions you get a case for it as uh, well as the camera itself and the case is waterproof it's a nice easy one very very secure with the fixings that come with it and uh, there you go one completely waterproof as far as i found camera you've got the two little arrows show you how to undo it when it comes to the battery on this one it's quite simple there's a little door at the rear of the camera Push the clip, the door springs open slightly, take it off and you can get the battery out. The charging port and SD card are accessed on the left side of the camera when you're looking at it from the rear. And I've taken the little rubber cover off of these for ease of clarity. The Hero 8, you don't actually need a housing. It's got two little drop down legs that will fit into a standard GoPro mounting system and uh, the housing itself is quite large um, obviously you've got to get the camera in there so you put the camera in and uh, simply close the latch it works in the same way as the Hero 3 one does in there's a two stage latch when it comes to the battery and memory card in this particular one you don't have two separate compartments you have one compartment on the side Flick down the very sturdy locking latch, push it open and there you have the charging data transfer port, the battery and the memory card. The one thing that is slightly different about this one is that if you don't take the battery out you can't actually access the memory card. So here we go, battery out and you can see where you get the memory card out. Again with this closure it is possible if you're not careful to actually not fully close it in much the same way as the Kaiser Bass X8. Although it's far more obvious, the latch on the case has not gone fully home. When it comes to looking at the cameras, the Garmin Verb is far, far physically larger than the 
GoPro Hero cameras are. But it does have one good feature. The lens cover is domed, which means if it rains, the rain will get blown off this by the fact that you're traveling. In contrast, the Hero cameras and the X3 have flat screens, even on the cases, which means the rain stays there. Talking of cases, here we have the X3, the Hero 8 and the Hero 3 side by side. We'll pop the cover off the Hero 3, he says, struggling with it a little bit. And uh, you'll see that the actual Hero 8 camera is pretty much as big as the enclosures for the other ones. In summary, what would I choose to use? It depends. If I wanted something to use for the ride to and from work, 40 minutes and just wanted it as a dash cam rather than recording footage that I'd use in the film, then I'd look at something like the Kaiser Bass X3. It's got a, an okay charge time, the picture quality, yeah, it's, it's average or probably below average these days, and uh, it'll do the job as a dash cam. If I wanted to record a long duration ride, such as the ride I did here for the Polycystic Kidney Disease Charity in 2020, then I'd look at using the Garmin Verb, mainly because I can charge it from a battery pack in a tank bag and it will give me the full five and a half hours of recording time before I need to worry about changing the memory card in it. But when it comes to day-to-day -day use and recording some of my medium to long rides of 200 to 400 miles, I'd go for the Hero 3 Silver. It's got a good recording time, I can take some spare batteries with me, I don't have a separate battery charger for it so I do have to charge the batteries through the unit and the um, H3 Black as well. But uh, yeah, it's a good, solid, dependable unit. I've owned it for something like 15 years now. Yeah, I had a few little hiccups with it on file transfers. There seems to have been a software update on Windows rather than the unit itself, which threw it out for a while. But uh, it's a nice, good, rugged unit. The picture quality is good enough for what I use it for on 1080. You can downgrade the picture quality, get a lot longer recording time out of it. And if you put a 1 to 8 gigabyte card in, you get well over 10 hours of recording time. And that's going to see you through pretty much all the batteries that I've got, all six of them. That's enough of my blather for now. You've had my recommendations on the various cameras. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Ta-ta for now.